Today I'm going to share a few 10 useful styling tips to always look stylish in your outfits. A lot of these tips I think you will have heard before, so I'm going to be providing you with lots of visual examples and also very specific ways of how you can incorporate this into your outfits. In my very first tip, I want to keep it broad because I want to address finding personal style. So I like to think of my style as feminine, as modern, and also minimal. This is really useful because when I'm putting together my outfits, I know to feel truly like myself. I need all three elements to be somewhat present. your style into one category then that's perfect but if you are like me and really struggle to say your style is bohemian or minimal or feminine then this is where using your multiple adjectives becomes really really helpful. In the rest of my tips I'm going to be pulling things from my wardrobe and trying them on to show you. My second tip is to become the professional stylist of your own wardrobe. And what this means is that you don't always have to wear things the way that the brand intended you to wear them, and instead play around with the versatility of pieces. This is something I recently learned where you take a sweater and you transform it into a bit of a scarf. So putting it on like this and then literally just wrapping the arms over each other and you're kind of done. I've shown you this trick with a very simple grey cashmere sweater but you can do this with most of your sweaters. So just think about the scarf combinations that you could have. And then of course you've got the option of wearing all your sweaters the opposite way. I'm really not showing you knits that were made to be reversible because obviously then that would work. These are all knits that were not made this way but can be styled this way. With this knit, it's got buttons on the other side and sometimes when I'm wearing a really statement piece, I don't really want the buttons being another distraction to the statement item. So in this case, I can just turn it around. It just creates more versatility in my looks. Not too long ago, I also showed you this sweater worn with the front at the back and then the back at the front. In the winter, if you're doing some layering, this is great because no one will ever know that you've only got the one blue sweater. They will think you have two, one with the v-neck, one without. And if you do have to take all your layers out because you you're inside now. I don't feel like the back looks bad. I think it's quite interesting to have that V and the buttons at the back and it's just a cool detail that I wouldn't mind showing off. My very last sweater thing is just to wear the sweater over your shoulders and this works in a very practical way because if you're ever layering and it gets warmer during the day, you can just throw it over your shoulder without having to like carry it around with you. I also think that it adds a lot to the outfit because without it, I would feel this outfit is so boring of just like a white t-shirt and a midi skirt. With this, it adds a bit more texture, it's a bit more interesting and it also keeps me kind of in between warm. I wouldn't wear this out and about for no reason, I would wear it out and about for the reason that I think I will need a jumper that day. My next tip is about mixing fabrics. If you start to think in terms of fabrics as opposed to just print and colour in your wardrobe, your wardrobe will literally be twice as versatile. This is something I've unfortunately only discovered this year, but ever since I discovered it, I've just kind of looked at style and outfits in a completely new way. So let's talk about the outfit I'm wearing right now. I have a cozy knit, this has got a bit of lace to it and has a bit of texture. In comparison, I would call this a pretty flat knit where it doesn't have that much texture and it has a very smooth appearance. One example of a fabric that could go with this knit would be something that drapes well. I've gone for a midi skirt, you could go for a pair of sleek trousers, but something that drapes well will be a bit of a contrast to the coziness of this knit. You don't have to go for the exact textures that I've gone for, but the point is to not go for just the one material from head to toe. So if I did the cotton t-shirt I wore before and then some cotton trousers, it would feel a bit flat. One combination I've really been loving myself is seeing all the different winter coats with a pair of patterned boots. I wouldn't normally say, you know, I'm hugely into pattern, but I think what's really beautiful about these looks is that you've got the coziness of the wool coat and without the pattern, it just kind of feels cozy. But when you've got the pattern boot on, it suddenly gives it a very modern look, which just offsets the coat really beautifully. An accessory in pattern is something that I've been looking for and I think it'll just look so nice with all the woolly textures for autumn winter. If you take this idea and start looking on Pinterest at some really chic outfits, you'll see that there's always a couple of different textures in every look. It's never just like a flat cotton look or a flat linen look. 
you've always got the textures going on. The next tip that I'm sharing with you that I think makes outfits feel more stylish is mixing metals. Now, I love my yellow gold and I'm often happy just to wear that by itself, but when I'm feeling the need to change things up, that's when I start mixing metals. I want to show you two jewelry stacks today of mixing metals and show you how I do it in a way that looks very intentional instead of feeling like it's a bit mismatched. This portion of the video here is in partnership with Midjury, so all the lovely pieces I'm about to show you is from Midjury, and let me show you the stacks up close. For the earring situation, we've got this beautiful hoop with diamond details, and then we've got a white gold base hoop here. All the little beautiful stones are diamond details. On the other side, we've got the same hoop, but we've got a yellow gold earring instead. And then these are also two 14 karat white gold necklaces. They're very dainty and beautiful with some diamond detailing. We've got six pieces of jewelry here, and three of them have a white gold base, three of them have a yellow gold base. And by doing it this way, I think it looks very intentional as opposed to feeling kind of mismatched. We're doing the same thing with the rings where you can see that there are two white gold rings and then the rest are yellow gold. And all of these rings are solid 14 karat gold, either yellow gold or white gold. I'm always very happy to work with Majuri because the pieces are actually solid and beautiful and you're not just buying very lightly plated things um, when it comes to the jewelry. I've got my second stack on and it's a very similar kind of idea. For the earrings, we changed out the second hoop for this little diamond bar. For the necklaces, it's a bit different where we've got the white gold one and then we've got the yellow gold chain with the pendant. I think all the little diamond details also helps tie these two colors together. So we do have a bit more yellow gold in the stack but it feels very harmonious and I don't feel like I need to add more white gold to tie it together. This is the ring stack. We can see two white gold bands. We can see a yellow gold band and we've also got a yellow gold bracelet over here. So those are my two stacks on how to mix metals. If you guys watch my past videos, in every single video I'm wearing something from Majuri. So if you're looking for something solid gold or even in diamonds, then Majuri is a great place to go. My favorite time to do this mixed metal trick is with outfits that I have worn a hundred times before and I'm just looking for those subtle changes to keep it feeling fresh and this is a very good example of an outfit that does not feel fresh to me anymore but with the jewelry, with the mixing of the metals, it does feel a little bit more updated than just wearing it with gold. In this next tip, I'm talking about the power of one statement piece. For me, the outfits I create that I really love are usually outfits that are fairly simple with one piece that really Really stands out. Just opting for a plaid coat, which is still classic, as opposed to a plain coat, can be the statement piece in your outfit. I'm going to show you another variation, this time with a white pair of trousers instead of the khaki. I'm also going to do a scarf trick from before, just building on what I am talking about. Over here, we've got a very simple inner layer, and then we've got the statement coat, which is our one statement item, and then of course the black scarf. So this is my second statement look that I have to share with you. I've got one more statement, which are the earrings I'm wearing. I just wanted to show you what I would do with my jewelry to create a statement. Sometimes instead of wearing statement pieces, I really just like to use my jewelry to update the look. These are two different earrings. I've just kind of mismatched them because I feel like the hoops are a similar size. So there's something that ties these two pieces together, but at the same time, they are obviously different. This is another example where I'm inspired by the asymmetric earring trend and just recreating it with what I have. And you can of course go a lot more subtle. It can be a matter of just wearing two different small studs and it could be just that element that catches someone's eye and keeps things feeling interesting. If you're not doing the one statement piece, another way to approach it is to have all your pieces be a more elevated basic. All three pieces are not super crazy, but they're all a little bit more statement than your everyday basic. And I think that this is another way to approach an outfit to keep things feeling interesting and stylish. So I either like to do one statement piece and keep everything else quite basic, or I like to do an entire outfit of elevated pieces to create a nice balance, but also be interesting. This next tip is the most generic one where I'm just telling you to belt something. But I'm gonna show you the things that I like to belt and then the things that I don't usually belt. I really like to belt this blazer and the reason why it works is that it can cross over 
quite a lot and because of that I think that it looks quite good belted so I'm going to show you what it looks like I hope you guys can see it well but I've done a little bit of a belt and I think it completely transforms this oversized jacket into something that feels a bit more fitted this is about options I love the oversized jacket as it is but sometimes sometimes when I want to have a closer fit this is one way of doing it I'm going to show you a blazer that doesn't work now to show you the difference this I just don't like as much and even if we ignore the fact that the blazer is shorter, it doesn't cross over enough. So for me, belting it doesn't make as much sense. Because of the shape of this blazer and the belt, it also gives me a bit of an equestrian feeling, which is very strange if I'm running around Sydney. This is a matter of preference, but in case you share a similar style to me, um, I'm hoping these tips may Give you some ideas. When it comes to trousers, it's quite simple. Basically anything low rise or mid rise like what I'm wearing, I probably wouldn't belt because it would really accentuate the widest part of my hip. The jeans I'm wearing here are very high rise. So in this case, I feel like a belt does accentuate the waistline a little bit more and it just gives the outfit a bit more detail, which is usually why I want to wear the belt. I feel like a crossbody bag is a really great styling tool that is a bit underrated. When it comes to crossbody bags, I'm always hearing about how it's convenient, it allows you to be hands-free, which is true, but I also think that it adds to an outfit and that's one of the reasons why almost all of my bags have a crossbody function. Here are two bags that I wear and love. If you've watched me on this channel, these are very familiar pieces. A blazer like this can be quite shapeless, so I really like that a crossbody bag just pins it down, which I really like. But notice the strap here, it's not a very exciting strap, so I'm going to show you now what it looks like with the thicker, more dramatic strap as an alternative. From a styling perspective, this is really great because it's so thick, it adds a significant detail to any outfit you're wearing it with. So that's actually the reason why I feel like a crossbody bag is kind of underrated when we're talking about styling, because it does make a huge difference to an outfit. The rule of three is something I like to use to troubleshoot outfits that I don't like. It's not something I think about when I'm actually creating the outfit, but if I create something I'm not happy with, I fix it with this rule. When an outfit doesn't feel right, I usually like to take away elements until I have three colors. Sometimes it might also mean adding a color to make it three. I get some questions about whether I include black, white, and denim into this. I think that when the denim is a very bright shade and it's affecting how you see the other colors, then it's included. Whereas if the denim kind of just fades back and you don't notice it as much, then I wouldn't include it. So I think it depends on the other colors you're wearing it with when it comes to those three shades. But the other way of thinking about the rule of three is to focus on what the eye sees. So when you look at an outfit, how many elements are there that catches the eye? Of the three items, the first will be my earrings. I feel like they're very noticeable because of how big they are. And they will be definitely one of the three things that my eye would first see. The second thing will be the knit because of the green color and also the lace detailing. I feel like I would notice it in this look. The third thing are the barrel leg jeans. Because of the shape of them, I think they make a little bit of a statement. And once again, it's something that I would see immediately in this outfit. The bag and the shoes, on the other hand, just disappear into the background because they don't really catch the eye when you're looking at this outfit. I think this is a very practical tip, so if you're not happy with an outfit in the morning, I think take a step back and try to figure out which three things are taking the attention. If there's much more than that, maybe take some elements away. If there's not enough, maybe add some elements to get to that sweet spot. In tip number nine, I'm going to talk about mismatching your accessories. This is nothing against matched accessories. I think if you match your bag to your shoes, like it's a perfectly good way to do things. But I also think that the alternative is just another option to go. In some of my outfits lately, I've been loving wearing, for example, a black bag with brown shoes or vice versa brown bag with black shoes and not feeling the need to match these two tones together another inspiration for me here is that in a lot of contemporary brands in their styling i noticed that a lot of the time they're not matching things like this they're looking at the outfit as a whole and it's just a different approach to the traditional way of having to match your belt to your shoes to your bag etc etc instead of putting the outfit on you can't see my shoes i'm going to put in a cutaway instead if you don't 
mix and match, then you either need a really large wardrobe with tons of pieces to wear together to match. Otherwise, you can only wear one of the shades and then you only buy in that color. And both of these for me is just a little bit limiting in one way or the other. And mixing and matching just opens up the combinations, especially if you are working with a smaller wardrobe. My final styling tip to look more stylish is to create nuance in your neutral outfits. The thing about neutral outfits is that in the past, I would find them so boring because I feel like I wasn't doing it right. And what I would do is that I would just go for like two neutrals and then wear them together and be done with the look. And I feel like it wasn't fully benefiting from how wonderful neutrals can be. I think neutral outfits look best when you just mix and match a nuance of different colors together. I don't apply any of the three color rules here. I don't apply any color rules when it comes to neutrals. And I just think that the more colors, the more shades, the better. So for this outfit, we've got like a charcoal and navy on the knit. I'm wearing a pair of white trousers, a black bag, and I would absolutely finish it off with like a brown shoe. I would also do something like a burgundy boot as well, just to add a bit more of that tone into this outfit. Another one of my favorite combinations that I like to talk about in almost every video is black, navy, and brown together. And you can see that in this outfit. So navy and white, black, and then brown. I think what makes this feel stylish is that it's not super matchy-matchy like in the last tip I talked about. I feel like this color combination is one of the most basic color combinations, but at the same time, it's not the three colors that people often think about wearing together first when we're talking about neutrals. So I really like that about this combo. And if you have a lot of neutral pieces, you're kind of getting a little bit tired of them. Really just mix in all the colors into an outfit and see how you like it. Who knows, you might be surprised to find that you actually love it as well. As I said, I didn't used to like neutral outfits because I was probably wearing like two shades of beige and there wasn't a lot of contrast there whereas by mixing in all these colors all these neutrals I have become more of a neutral fan while enjoying the pop of color so this is my last tip and definitely one I would recommend trying for a more stylish outfit. As I'm filming this video, I'm saying that I am just not enjoying what's in the shops right now. So instead, I'm going back to my wardrobe and wearing things in a different way to get more styles from the things I already have. Throughout this entire video, I've really been loving this idea of being the stylist, where since you already have all these clothes, to wear it however you want to, as opposed to how it has been sold. So for example, for the earrings, I've never purchased a pair of asymmetrical earrings because you can so easily just create it with what you have. I feel like because of this whole sweater trick, I will be buying far fewer scarves because, well, I now have a scarf in every color of sweater. If you're like me and you get bored of clothes quite easily, these styling tips are the things that will give you that new feeling without having to buy anything new. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you to Majuri for kindly sponsoring the earlier segment. If you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to go hit the like button, subscribe if you're interested in seeing more from me. If you'd like to see more daily outfit of the day kind of things, I also have an Instagram over here. Have a great week ahead and I'll see you next week. Bye.